Even a man who is pure in heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolfbane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. <laughs> My paintings are acrylic, surrealist nightmares on uh, canvas. Jonathan Morrill grew up in Newmarket and was always more interested in fictional monsters than popularity contests. It was interesting because there weren't a lot of artists in Newmarket at the time in Newmarket High School. An artist was a liability. You could only really get ahead if you were scholarly or athletic, and I was really never either of those. 25 years ago, Jonathan packed his bags and headed to Hollywood, where he has now enjoyed cult fame as a film director, actor, and artist. Hey, man, are you deaf or something? Baby, come on. Excuse me? Look, man, you're going to have to be a lot more alert if you're going to be here sketching on 42nd Street. What are you from? Uh, Jersey. Jer Jersey. <laughs> Hollywood, yeah, I went to Hollywood. Um, always been interested in movies and monsters and figured I can only go so far here in Newmarket, so I ended up um, going to Hollywood. But as the saying goes, there is no place like home. And this October, Merrill returned to Newmarket, bringing his monsters with him. <laughs> paintings hang on the wall at Crack Skulls Cafe for the month of October, an exhibit Jonathan has titled Fear and Loathing in Newmarket. All of these pieces are based on actual events that happen in Newmarket as far as what's going here in the show. And I was able to, in, this, in California, all these were painted in Hollywood. So if I needed a Newmarket reference, I would get on Google Earth and actually get to the exact location that I needed. <laughs> faces in Jonathan's paintings are familiar to patrons of the coffee shop. My dear old literature, literature teacher, Mrs. Roberge, who ironically enough passed away 10 years to the day when this show opened. She's still haunting me. She was always dispensing the classics. Classic dispenser. What's a, a Pez dispenser? That's a classic dispenser. So I turned her into a Pez dispenser and she, instead of dispensing candies, is dispensing these 3,000 page sleeping pills. It's therapeutic. My art is very therapeutic. For me, it's therapeutic. It's, it's therapy on canvas. It, 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 it helps me tell these sordid tales of weirdness and put them on canvas. And to sell them is even, that's just an extra bonus. Others painted in the series are only legends. In Newmarket alone, we have three distinct native Newmarket monsters. The first one would be the Bay Road Swamp Monster. The second one would be Skeleton Man. And now there's an Ash Swamp Road Bigfoot. And some of the art includes shared memories with a dark twist. When I was a little kid, not like a lot of little kids that grew up in southeastern New England, um, there was a show called The Uncle Gus Show. This piece is called Sit Down, You Little B which is pretty much what he told us to do when he cut to the Mr. Magoo cartoon. It's just sort of all of uh, my fears and phobias in one painting, fear of clowns and, uh, and fear of funny uncles. A childhood friend was the one who talked Jonathan into coming home for this show, and the task of being able to fill a wall with hometown art didn't daunt this monster artist at all. I'm just so hyper. I have too much energy, so I, I'd rather, I'd, and I have a process now where I can be working on five or six paintings at a time, and they're, they're like Polaroid pictures developing at, at their own rate. Jonathan claims to be an equal opportunity monster artist, 
All fictional creatures are welcome on his canvases, but being a monster artist means paying attention to details. You have, I mean, people that, you gotta get it right. I have to be really careful, like with King Kong, I mean, there are people that are, it's hard to believe, but there are King Kong enthusiasts who will say, hey, you know, there were only 12 steps on that sacrificial altar that Fay Ray gets tied up to, not for, I'm not kidding. They can be, so I have to get it right. I do a lot of research. So for fear and loathing in Newmarket, Jonathan hit the books. So I'm standing right where Lizzie Borden stood after her double murder acquittal. I tried to incorporate as much contemporary new market locations as I could being on the other side of the country, but in one piece particular, the Lizzie Borden piece, I had to rely on historical photographs. Jonathan says the homecoming has been a great one. It's just amazing to come back here after 25 years and, and to feel that kind of love and support was just overwhelming. <laughs> it's a bit, my cup runneth over. No, it was, it was, it was wonderful. But for now, it's back to Hollywood for this new market monster artist. I've tried to do other genres. I've tried to do serious dramas, and they always come out like weird comedies. I've tried to do weird comedies, and they end up being scary movies. I just can't shake it. It's this aura I have ever since my days here in Newmarket. It, it follows me. As for another homecoming, Jonathan says he would love to keep illustrating the spooky stories of his childhood. There's no end in sight. It's a great, I mean, there's plenty of monsters and there's plenty of themes to incorporate them in. And I only scratch the surface with weird stories.